Biopsychology, endogenous pacemakers and exogenous psychogivers. So you need to be aware of um, these two factors, the endogenous pacemakers and exogenous psychogivers, and how they affect the sleep-wake cycle. So endogenous pacemakers are internal factors. So they are the internal body clocks in the brain that regulate our biological rhythms. In particular, the suprachiasmatic nucleus. So you can refer to that as the SCN. Now, the SCN is located within the hypothalamus and it is our master clock. So it is responsible for controlling the other pacemakers within the body. Now, it receives information about light levels via our optic nerves and that keeps our suprachiasmatic circadian rhythm in time with daylight and daylight hours. Now it sends signals to the pineal gland, which produces melatonin, and that's a hormone, and it produces it at night time. And generally melatonin has the inhibitory effect on our brain's wakefulness, so it helps induces sleep. So research into suprachiasmatic has been on, done on animals. So chipmunks and hamsters. So de Courcy removed the suprachiasmatic nucleus from 30 chipmunks. And they also used surgical controls and intact controls. She released them back into their natural habitat and to observe them. It was found that after 80 days, most of the ones that had the suprachiasmatic nucleus removed had been killed. Now, it was believed they'd been killed because they'd remained awake during times when they would naturally be asleep, therefore resulted in their deaths. They were awake when their prey was out and they should have been asleep. So it demonstrates the idea that the suprachiasmatic nucleus has an evolutionary advantage. Ralph investigated the role of the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the sleep-wake cycle of hamsters. So what happened is they had hamsters that they referred to as uh, mutant hamsters because their sleep-wake cycle was 21 hours instead of 24 hours. They took the suprachiasmatic nucleus from those mutant hamsters and they transplanted it into the brains of a hamster that had a normal sleep wake cycle of 24 hours. So they switched the 24 hour suprachiasmatic nucleus for the 21 hour suprachiasmatic nucleus. Now, what happened was the hamsters that had that, had that um, transplanted suprachiasmatic nucleus changed their sleep wake cycle from 24 hours to 21 hours. So it showed that the suprachiasmatic nucleus is a dominant endogenous pacemaker so it is really important in controlling our sleep wake cycle that that pacemaker it controls our internal body clock so endogenous are within exogenous site guides are external factors so environmental effects that events that affect our biological clock and we're going to look at two we're going to look at light levels and social cues so light resets our biological clock each day and helps to keep our clock in the 24 hour cycle in that circadian rhythm. Now specialized light detecting cells in our retina contain melan lepsin and they help judge the brightness and of the light and they send signals to the suprachiasm nucleus to set the daily clock. Now this system works for most blind people too, even though they have the absence of rods and cones and visual perception, they have these light detecting cells that help regulate the 24 hour clock. Now research into this was done by Campbell and Murphy. So they had um, 15 participants and they were woken up at different times of the day and they had a light pad um, shone on the backs of their knees. So the results were that they'd changed 
or cause a deviation in the usual sleep wake cycle of up to three hours in some um, cases. So instead of it being 24 hours, it was like 21 hours or they'd extended it by three hours. So it was 27 hours. So that suggests that light is a powerful external factor. So a powerful exogenous zeitgeber and it doesn't necessarily need to rely on the eyes to even have an effect. So even shining it to parts of the skin has an effect on how it controls our sleep wake cycle. Social cues are another important factor. So we are influenced by social cues from the activity of people around us. Now infants, even as young as six weeks, begin to develop circadian rhythms. And by about 16 weeks, they are trained due to the schedules that they have had in place. So when their bedtimes are, when their mealtimes are, when nap times are. Research has also suggested that adapting to local times for eating and sleeping is an effective way of training your circadian rhythms and adapting to um, local time zones when you're traveling and to avoid jet lag. So here we go, we've got a four mark question. Sam is a police officer. She's just started working a night shift and after a week she finds that she has difficulty sleeping during the day and is becoming tense and irritable. Sam is also worried that she is less alert during the night shift itself. Using your knowledge of endogenous pacemakers and exogenous sight guibers explains Sam's experience. So remember, we need to explicitly relate to that scenario. So endogenous pacemakers are internal biological factors that control our sleep wake cycle, such as the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is the master clock. Whereas Exogenous sight guibers are external factors such as light and social cues that affect our sleep wake cycle. So moving to the night shift shift means that her pacemakers try to impose the inbuilt rhythm of sleep, but now they're out of sync with the uh, exogenous sight guiber of light and that's disrupting her biological rhythm and has led to a disruption in her sleep pattern. Therefore, that's led to an increase in anxiety and potentially a decrease in her alertness, uh, making her tense and um, irritable and worried that she is less alert at night time. If we're going to look at evaluation then, so we've got supporting evidence from Burgess that expose volunteers to light treatments in order to shift their sleep wake cycles. And participants who had been exposed to bright light felt sleepy two hours earlier in the evening and woke up two hours early in the morning. So supporting evidence that light is an important external and ex factor, so an important exogenous zeitgeber. We've got contradictory evidence on exogenous zeitgebers and they might be overstated and overemphasised. So contradictory evidence from individuals that live in Arctic regions or Arctic areas. And despite prolonged exposure, of sunlight in various times of the year, they still showed a normal sleeping pattern or a sleep wake cycle of 24 hours. It didn't change during periods of um, uh, times where they have like hours and prolonged exposure to sunlight as opposed to when it's winter time and they have very little light and more darkness. Their, their sleep wake cycle still stayed around 24 hours so that contradicts the influence of light being an external factor that can influence our sleep wake cycle. Also, other parts of the regions of our body might be useful in or are important in controlling our sleep wake cycle. So, body clocks can be found in other organs, not just the suprachiasmatic nucleus. So, um, lungs, liver, and skin. So changing the feeding habits of mice altered their circadian rhythm of the cells in the liver for, for up to 12 hours. But the circadian rhythms of the suprachiasmatic nucleus had been unaffected. So other areas might be just as important or um, they haven't been um, as rigorously tested due to this overemphasis of the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Also testability. So we've got studies lack validity because isolating one pacemaker such as a suprachiasmatic nucleus 
is rare in real life, all down to an exogenous psychiver. So just narrowing it down to social cues or just narrowing, narrowing it down to light, it, it doesn't work like that. Um, in real life, you're probably going to have a combination of endogenous pacemakers and external psychiver working together to control our sleep-wake cycle. Also, the use of animals in research raises concerns about extrapolation. Um, there are clearly psychological differences between chipmunks, um, hamsters and humans and trying to generalise the findings to humans, we should be very cautious because of the complexity of human behaviour. Does it apply to humans? In terms of a 16 marker, describe and evaluate research into the effects of endogenous pacemakers and exogenous psychivers on the sleep-wake cycle. So remember, in terms of this, research means theories, explanations and research studies. So we can talk about the general idea that um, the endogenous pacemakers are internal factors, the internal body clocks that control our sleep-wake cycle, in particular the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Um, that is the master clock that controls our other pacemakers, um, etc. And uh, research into um, de Corsi or Ralph's mutant hamsters or their chipmunks. Um, talk about the exogenous zeitgeibers, so external factors such as um, light and social cues, so how light can influence our sleep wake cycle, how um, social cues can influence our sleep wake cycle. So there'd be your two main AO1 paragraphs and then three to four evaluation points, um, depending on whether you do point evidence, explain link. If you can get any issues and debates in there, so the use of um, non human animals, it's biologically, it might be biologically reductionist to reduce it down to a single component in the brain, so the single uh, suprachiasmatic nucleus. Um, it's very scientific due to the control and brain imaging techniques. Um, they're nomothetic in its approach that it's taking, um, it's creating general laws that it's applying to all humans. So there are some issues and debates that you could weave in there. Please do not shoehorn them in just because I've told you to. You have to be quite sophisticated in your use of issues and debates and try to interleave them within your evaluation points.